So hey guys, staying here from Rocky Creek, I am here with our incubator, and this is probably our, I don't know, sixth or seventh time, maybe more than that, that we have incubated eggs here at our homestead. And incubating eggs is not only a super cool and fun way to get your kids involved and to have some excitement of your own, but it's also a way to add some extra self-sufficiency on your homestead if you don't have a chicken that'll go broody. Now I will tell you from my experience, when a hen naturally goes broody and chooses to raise those chicks, in my opinion, that is actually far easier than doing this, brooding them, and then integrating them with the flock. The mama hen, nature is designed perfectly, and the mother hen is usually very protective of them, teaches them all the stuff they need to know, and she takes care of all the, you not having to clean out brooders or anything like that, and the birds just naturally learn their way in to the flock. Um, now, there are some cons to having a broody hen naturally hatch eggs, but in my experience, it's been a little bit of an easier process on me. Uh, but anyways, we're going to talk real briefly about incubating eggs. Um, this isn't going to be super in-depth, but hopefully if you're interested in incubating your own eggs, maybe you're intimidated, hopefully my simple conversation will maybe give you a little more confidence in giving it a try. So this is our incubator. It is the Farm Innovations Pro Series digital um, incubator. And what it has right here on the display screen, you have a temperature, the amount of days left until the eggs hatch, and your current percentage of humidity. Now, when you are first incubating eggs, you want, it'll take on average 21 days to hatch an egg. Some eggs are different, bantam eggs a little bit sooner, but on average, you're going to set this to 21. Your, hum your humidity, you're going to hold between 50 and 55% for the first 18 days. When you get into three days left, as you see here, that is lockdown mode where you will remove the eggs from their turner and set them in here. And I have since added water and I'm trying to get that humidity number to get up to anywhere between 65 to 75. Um, and so it'll take some time for that to get up there. So we're going to monitor that and we'll see where it ends up. But while that's going on, let's talk about the turners. So this is the turner unit that is inside of our incubator and came with it. Here's a little motor, I believe it is, and that slowly rotates these trays like so throughout the day. In nature, a mother hen will turn her eggs anywhere from one time an hour up to four times an hour. That's a lot. And for you to have to manually do that yourself is a lot. So I highly recommend that you get an incubator that has an automatic turner in it. It'll save you a lot of headache and make it easier on you. It's like the crock pot of incubating eggs. As I've already said, the eggs will remain in this for the first 18 days and you want to put the egg with the smaller pointy side down and the fat part up here. Now when adding water to your incubator, ideally you want to use distilled water. Distilled water helps to, to protect your equipment because you got moisture and vapors and you have heating elements, you have humidity monitors, you got a lot of electronics in here and also it makes cleaning later on easier but you don't want all of that, those mineral buildups and some other issues to develop. So by using distilled water the same as you would, they recommend for humidifiers and things of that nature, it's just easier on your equipment and it's a little bit more pure. And then what I like to use to add my water, believe it or not, is one of these like syringes for injecting meat. Uh, for me, it's a whole lot easier to do that, to, to add the water to this specific incubator. And I personally, they have these little black ports here that you're supposed to be able to add the water in. Well, I think they're terrible and the water leaks everywhere. So what I usually do is I can see, you may not be able to see on the camera, but down in the bottom 
of here, there's channels that that water sits in. And I have learned it's easier that I can fit the nozzle of that through the little grates there and I can add the water. The only time I will make a point to use the little side port is during lockdown if I have to add water because during lockdown, I do not want to open this at all. I want this to be, it's called lockdown for a reason. These things are to sit still and not to be touched or moved. And we want to keep everything as consistent in here. as Now in terms of monitoring our eggs, uh, we do candle our eggs. I try to handle the eggs as little as possible to not disturb them so that they can do what they need to do. But what I usually do is I usually candle around day seven or eight, and then I usually candle again a few days before lockdown. So usually about day 15 or so, when I'm about less than one week or right at one week away from going into lockdown. And usually I don't remove any eggs until I do that second check. When I do that second check around day 15, day 14, somewhere there between 14 and 16, um, at that point is when I decide to remove any eggs that don't appear like they're developing like they should. I've not had any issues with an egg going rotten or being smelly or anything like that. Now, if you crack it outside, yeah, it's probably not going to smell good. But in terms of in the incubator, I have not had any issues with a bad smell. This incubator is actually in our bedroom, and that's because we have a two-year-old son, and he would absolutely destroy these eggs. So this is the only safe place in our home to operate this incubator. Now, I have an inside there because you can think, well, you got a garage, you got a shed. Those are our potential options, but the problem is, is they're not as climate controlled as the interior of my house. And usually, once I get my humidity set and my temperature set on this, I usually only have to add some additional water maybe two or three times throughout the 21 day process. And usually, I'll try to do that around the time I candle the eggs. So I'm only doing it, you know, all at the same time and I don't have to mess with it much. When it's in the garage or something to that effect, it's a lot harder to, to maintain that balance, particularly on the moisture side of things. Um, also, I want to make sure that I don't allow the direct sunlight to come through this window and hit this as the sunlight through the glass on here could increase temperatures higher than I want as well. So you just want it out of direct sunlight and, and you want it to have it in a more of a climate controlled environment and it'll give you a much better success. Now, today was lockdown day, so all we did today was we took the turner out, we placed the eggs onto the plastic grate, and we added some additional moisture, and I will be checking this about every 30 minutes to see where the moisture level's at. Now, I have lost the ports that go in right here. They're usually red plastic ports, so I just have a strip of masking tape, and there's two of them. Um, and these are ventilation ports. And what I will do if for some reason I've added too much water, I will first remove this, this tape and see if that little extra airflow will reduce it to where I need it to be. If it won't, then I'll pull those side ports where you add water. And usually between those four holes opened up, the, the humidity will get to where it's at. I can tell you the hardest thing about incubating eggs, in my opinion, is balancing the humidity. The longer you use your specific incubator, because they're all slightly different, the easier it becomes. I remember my first, you know, two times incubating in here, I was ready to throw this thing through a wall. But the longer I've used it, I've kind of learned how much water is normal to get it to where it needs to be. And it's actually not difficult at all. Um, this, like this group right here has been super easy and it's gone by very quickly and hopefully we'll get a good hatch rate out of it. I would estimate that I average anywhere from 70 to 80% of a hatch rate using this incubator. The only time I haven't had that was when I tried to incubate some I am Samani's twice, but both times, number one, I am Samani's are already a little more difficult to, to hatch. But secondly, I tried to do it in the garage and that turned out I was constantly having to manage it, deal with it. And ultimately I think that was a big part of it. Anytime I've done it inside in a controlled environment, I'd say I've had at least 70% success minimally. And I'd say probably really closer to 80% on average.
Well, good morning. Got a little cup of joe here. I'm actually supposed to be at work today, but this guy is unfortunately sick again. Um, it's been a heck of a year with him trying to keep him healthy, but we got some stuff in the works to take care of that moving forward. But so he's chilling with me today, but there is a little bit of positivity to it. You know, try to find a silver lining if you can. And that is, uh, as you already saw, one of our eggs hatch. That was yesterday, uh, probably around four o'clock in the afternoon we had the first one officially hatch and since then we've had several other pips and i i migrated the incubator into the living room because it never fails every time i hatch eggs i swear they always hatch right you know as it's getting towards bedtime and you can't go to sleep with chicks that loud but you know uh the the chicks that have hatched they move the eggs around and stuff so as long as you don't open up the top of the incubator to where you mess up the humidity and temperature, a real quick moving into here unplugged it for maybe, you know, 10 seconds overall. No big deal. Um, but so let's go ahead. Let's follow up this morning. Let's see how many we have since the morning time has, has come. So I have at least slid it underneath this table, though, to try to keep Wild Man from opening the top of it. He's kind of looked at it a little bit, but he hasn't messed with it too bad. So if you look, we actually have two that have hatched now. And, and clearly Bruce is going to be the dads of these two because the black trait has really overtaken it. One of them is definitely from a Polish mix and because it came from the, the only white eggs that we have, which are the Polish eggs. And the other one came from a blue egg, which is going to be either a prairie bluebell or a crested cream leg bar. So be curious how that plays out. Now it looks like... That brown egg there has pipped. Um, I saw a few others look like it pipped. Uh, this brown egg right here has pipped. And when I say pipped, that just means it started the phase. These two eggs right here, you can see progress going on with them. And then this moisture buildup is too much that it's hard to really see the eggs way over there. Now the time it takes for a chick to hatch from the moment that it does its initial pip or its first initial hole through the egg can vary greatly. Um, I've had some take over 24 hours and I've had some only take a couple hours. Uh, so just don't be impatient, just let it do its thing. Technically by that counter, we have another day left uh, before they'd even start. And so what I usually do is I will let them go for a couple days, and if I'm not seeing any other activity after that, then I'll, I'll evaluate what I'm going to do. But be patient. Let it take its time. The big thing, though, is, is since you're still in sort of a lockdown mode, is try your best not to open up that top unless you, you can. Uh, maintaining that temperature and humidity is crucial. The only time that I have ever done it is if I've had, like, the one chick has hatched rather early. And if I get to where that chick's been there for over 24 hours and we still got others hatching and it's fully dry, you know, I may go ahead and do a very quick open grab, shut it back as fast as possible and move it to, to a brooder. But those chicks should be fine for 24 to 48 hours. So try not to mess with it unless you absolutely have to. Hey guys, so it's the next morning. It's now been about 36 hours. Hi buddy. And this little guy is sick, so I'm home with him, but... I need to go ahead. Uh, we've had quite a bit more hatch since we last were together, um, but we're to the point now, about 36 hours is when I'm going to try to get the rest of the birds out of here. You know, when a bird hatches, you know, they're usually good for about 48 hours or so before they need to have any kind of a supplement nutrition or whatnot, which is why they can ship day old chicks in the mail. When you get them home, you put them in there. Uh, so we've left this thing alone for at least 36 hours. 
I don't see any pips and what eggs are left. Um, if there is one, it's going to be up underneath it where I can't see it. But I'm going to go ahead and take my chances and get these chicks out, and I'll do it very quickly, trying to get them, you know, a couple at a time, let the humidity and stuff change. So there's not a drastic change. If by chance there might be one or two eggs left, the reason why I want to do it quickly is that if you get a drastic change, uh, some people call it shrink wrapping, where the membrane inside of the egg will shrink wrap to the like tighten up to the chicken, and it makes it hard for them to get out. So, but I'm pretty confident all that's hatched has hatched. Um, if anything, we may lose one or two at most, but let's go ahead and let's try to get these guys out very quickly and then we'll get them into the brooder with our other chicks. Guys, I can't even count them really because they're all just running all over the place. So we'll have to figure out our numbers once we get them out, but no doubt Bruce is the daddy to all these guys. I don't have any boxes, so I'm gonna use this extra feed insert thing that I had in the garage. So I'm trying to let the humidity, I'm watching the humidity because uh, that's what I don't want to drop a whole lot. And actually now that these chickens are moving around, it looks like there is one more egg that is trying to hatch. So I want that humidity not to get below 65%. Um, so I'm letting that kind of restabilize so I can get these last two birds out. We've had an actual very good hatch rate on this, so I'm very pleased. Well, there they are guys one two three four five six seven eight nine looks like ten of them and we got one more in the works right now uh this there's one that's got a little more white it might be this guy i think was the very first one hatched um and it was going to be a polish im mix uh but there's no doubt that bruce's all black trait definitely passes on but this is kind of a good time to say this is where you got to be careful particularly when you're buying I am Samani's because a couple of these guys don't have much white and I could easily if I was a scammer pass this off as an I am on some of them and so make sure you ask to see the the breeding parents if you do that but we're going to get these guys into the brooder with our other chicks and let them start settling in uh, what are those what? Baby chicks. those are baby chicks you're right So this is where having a good sized trough helps. Um, so like these chicks right now are about five days old. It's amazing how much of a difference that is from these guys at five days to these guys that just hatched. They grow so fast. But I went ahead, I had actually raised this heat lamp up a couple times because they weren't needing as much heat. But since it's so big, I can drop this down to give them what they need. And then these guys can kind of get not quite underneath it, but close to the edge, and it works out fine. Here comes the first one, coming to check them out. Well guys, I hope that gives you a little insight into incubating eggs. It's really not difficult at all. And after you invest in your initial incubator, if you have a rooster, um, or you want to start a breeding program, it's really not very difficult. And you don't have a whole lot invested other than a good incubator in your initial flock, but start little by little. If the only thing you're wanting is to produce eggs or, or, or to be able to be self-sufficient in terms of your birds and you could care less if they cross, then it's really affordable once you get a good incubator knocked out. Mine is probably the cheapest option you can get with a Turner type setup, uh, but there are some that are much more expensive that are much better. But I've been pretty pleased with mine. Um, I, I'd have to figure out our percentages, but I would say that we probably got, once again, about a 70 to 80% hatch rate. So I'm very pleased with that. But we'll wait and see if we get any more, but I think this will do it for now. We're just gonna take our time and monitor these guys and make sure everybody's selling in okay and everybody's doing okay. And if these guys pull through the first two days, I think they'll be good for the rest of the time. So I hope this helped y'all out. Hope everybody's doing good. We'll see you here real soon in one of our next episodes. Bye guys.